and I'm going to go through the calibration of the SpinQ Gemini Mini Quantum Computer. Now the system automatically calibrates whenever you turn it on, when it goes through a sequence of steps for auto calibration. When I received the system, as soon as I got it hooked up, I got the uh, letter from China saying that they needed to do a deep calibration. And uh, that's something that I set the system up for remote access. And I actually got to sit and watch as their engineer logged into the system and did a very intense calibration of the nuclear magnetic resonance system uh, after it had traveled such a distance from China to here to England. And now I'm going to take you through the manual calibration. And let's just show the nuclear magnetic resonance system. That's the square box in the middle. That contains two very high power stationary magnets that uh, have one Tesla of power. The shimming coils, which adjust the magnetic flux to keep the field consistent. Uh, temperature controls and the nuclear magnetic resonance cell itself. All right. So, just go to calibration. Device calibration, here. Now the first thing that we need to do before frequency calibration is we need to turn off the lock field, which keeps the frequency of the nuclear magnetic magnetic resonance system stable. So we'll go here. Here's the waveform, the Fourier transform, center frequency, the lock field voltage on the system. We're going to temporarily turn the lock field off so that we can recalibrate the frequencies. So that's off. I go back to device calibration. Scroll down to do a frequency calibration. Start. And now it's scanning through frequencies and finding the resonance of the hydrogen and the phosphorus atom in the nuclear magnetic resonance sample. And that's complete. There we go. I just refresh the system, update the data. Now next, for phase, power, and ground state calibration, I need to turn the lock field back on. So turn that on first. Right here. Calibrating phase. H channel is the hydrogen which is the first qubit of the system. P channel is the phosphorus, which is the second qubit. Uh, in future videos, I'll go through the molecular architecture inside the system, but uh, now we're just doing calibration. So let me start that process. The Fourier transform that you'll see here is the actual spectrum of the uh, sample cell in the nuclear magnetic, magnetic resonance system. So it's determining the hydrogen channel phase and the phosphorus channel phase. That's complete. It'll show us the variation. Nuclear magnetic res resonance signal for hydrogen ranges here from about 238 to 223 degrees of phase. The NMR for the phosphorus channel 
this ranges between 221 and 232 degrees of phase over time. So that's phase calibrated. Move on to power. During power calibration, it's going to cycle through various pulse widths. And that's the radio frequencies that are being bombarded out of the sample in the nuclear magnetic resonance cell. And all through this process is also gathering a selection of points for the rabbinic oscillation of sample one, the first qubit, which is the hydrogen channel, and the second qubit, which is the phosphorus channel. And that will construct a curve as we complete about 120 to 150 microseconds of pulse width. for a minute oscillation. There we go. Just filling in the graph with dots over time. see our oscillation curves on the two qubits. And that's power calibrated. Finally, we calibrate the ground state. And again, we have Fourier transforms to show the spectrum of qubit one the hydrogen, cubic two, the phosphorus. Cubit one, excellent. Point nine nine four. And point nine eight eight for cubit two. Just need the amplitudes. Now basically all of these measures here are one minus the noise for the cubit divided by the amplitude of the cubit. And that's complete. I'll update that. And that's a calibration.